This show is brought to you by MeUndies. Go to MeUndies.com slash Joey to get 20% off of your first order. You can get a subscription or a single pair. You go to MeUndies.com slash Joey to get 20% off of your first order. And shipping is always free in the U.S. and Canada. And you can save up to $8 a pair with the MeUndies subscription plan. Show is also brought to you by Headspace. Go to Headspace.com right now and download their free Headspace app. They're giving every listener of the Church of What's Happening Now a free trial of their Headspace app and begin their Take 10 program for 10 days of guided meditation. That's headspace.com slash Joey to download the free Headspace app. Show is also brought to you by Onnit.com. Go to Onnit.com and use code word CHURCH to save 10% on all of their great optimization products like Alpha Brain, Shroom Tech Immune, and Shroom Tech Sport. Kick that motherfucker, Lee. Wednesday, May 18th, you bad motherfuckers. Smoking, poking, lighting yourself on fire. I don't give a fuck. It's Wednesday, bitches. The day the devil was buried at sea. What? Respected, bitch. Uh. Where's Hillary at? <laughs> Until I call Earl. What? Lee Syatt. Joey the Kettlebell Alvarado. <laughs> I love that fucking jam. First right. time I heard that jam, dog, I almost jumped out a window. It's an awesome song, man. It was in Boulder, Colorado. And then I heard it in uh, Copland. In Copland, oh, when you got shoot uh, under the bridge. That's the music. That, Sylvester that, Stallone, right? Yeah, that's the yeah. music the black guy's playing with the machine gun. When they <laughs> go back, then Wonder Boy jumps yeah. off the fucking building, and you hear that jam in the car, and the guy's driving by, you're like, Jesus, fuck. When right. did you start getting into rap? Or hip-hop, I guess, not rap. Public enemy. You know, listen, you, you got into rap if you liked hip-hop, whatever that fucking uh, song was. Uh, I said a hip uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that old school. That's, that's old, old, school. old school stuff right there. And then, you know, it evolved over the years. And then, I don't know. I really like Public Enemy. Yeah. I was back, like, way back then, man, with Curtis Blow and all those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, I like basketball. I was really into, like, break dancing stuff. and stuff yeah. like that. I so never that, break that's what, So that, that's what was in. It was, like, Curtis Blow, the Fat Boys, Run DMC. So Africa Mombada, uh, yeah. Wanda for Child yeah, Molestation yeah, now and shit. What? Yeah, <laughs> dog. I read an article the other day. Uh, like, all sucks. black men should read this. And uh, African Mombada molested a bunch of fucking kids. Oh, yeah. They had, Damn. like, kids. Uh, like his a, bodyguards. His, and, like, everywhere. They would just bring, like, teams of them. And, like, he would have some travel. Allegedly. I don't, I don't no know way. Africa Mombada. But yeah. according to the article, yeah. Wow. That is fucking... It's like a growing fucking... Man. You know, and I tell you, when I was a kid, I suspected somebody at my high school, but I never heard some. A friend of mine <laughs> told me, yeah, that he saw somebody sucking his dick one time. <laughs> but <laughs> he took me to basketball but he still games wasn't and sure? shit. Um, no, nah, I only got molested one time. Like, one guy tried to molest me one time in the car <laughs> in the wintertime. I seriously, I went down to play basketball. You know, I was a basketball player, and it snowed. Uh -huh. And when it snowed in the east fucking coast, it snowed for two days and yeah. locked the city up. There was, so the buses, instead of running every 15 minutes, they were like every two hours. So I think I got a ride down there. But then on the way back, everything freezes up. It gets nighttime. It's dark. And I'm not hitchhiking. I'm just waiting for the bus. And some dude pulls over and he fucking, and he went to hit the ball. And when he went to touch, he goes, you like basketball. When he went to hit the ball, he slipped and grabbed my cock. And at the next fucking light, God was in the car because the door just opened up. And I ran out of the car, and I ran across the street to Schutzen Park. Did I tell you this last week? No, no, no. Come you, on. You, I think I've heard this story about I the basketball a, before. But I not. ran across the street to Schutzen Park. Schutzen Park is an old fucking German place Schützen Park. that I grew up with. It's a banquet hall, and then they have a soccer field. And when I was a kid, we played baseball back there, but every once in a while, the chef, they called him the cook or something, the chef or whatever, <laughs> he'd come back there with a hacker and a dog. And sick the dog on you. And we'd be with motorcycles back there. But they also had a soccer stadium. And they had, uh, what's that metal that you sell? Sheet metal. As a roof. So people could sit under the sheet metal. When we found out, we got a bill of a sheet. 
Dog, if you go to that stadium right now, if it rains, those motherfuckers are fucked. <laughs> we took every piece of fucking sheet metal there, one piece at a time. We'd go up there. We were 13. We knew nothing about <laughs> nothing, but we knew if we got a piece of sheet metal, we could chop it four ways. It's 25 bucks. When you're fucking 13, that's a little bag of reefer, wow, an eight-pack of beer, a couple hits of acid. Pretty smart. Yeah, maybe an album <laughs> and shit. So we went back there. It was a German place. I ran in there. I just snowed, so I hid behind a snow pile, and I took like a bottle and waited for him to drive, and, but he never... You had there. a bottle just waiting to crack. Just ready to throw open. it at him with the window open and run. Get him good and run and fucking run or maybe call the cops or whatever. See, he didn't know the back of that uh, place like I knew. Mm. I had grown up in those fucking woods. Yeah. I caught ringworm every summer. <laughs> I knew those woods like the back of my fucking hand. I really did, man. So if you chased me into those woods, you were a dead man. You were not going to find me mm. because I knew those woods. So. Yeah, man. It's like... Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Man, I grew up on Fort Jackson, South Carolina for a long time. And man, the woods over there, that was like our home. That's your home. That was our stomping ground. That's your we had, like, you little know forts everything. in there. We knew all you know the, the trees. Paths, yeah. Where the creek was, where to cross the creek, everything, man. It was cool. Somebody chases you, they're fucking done. They're the puts in there. <laughs> Leave him in the traps and stuff. Well, it's tough now. I mean, we, we just got that picture today on Twitter. Stuff changes all the time. Like, do you think you could still go in those woods? Like, we got that picture of Hashways that's now something. Yeah, it's a Cuban place. Else. It's a Cuban place. I knew that. I knew. I, went, I didn't go into Nobody has gone into that Cuban <laughs> restaurant because it was like a, like a 40-year restaurant in my hometown, like a deli. Uh-huh. And it was a liquor store deli, and they opened up a Cuban place in there, and nobody's gone. Like, everybody I talked to, like, Hashways, I tell them, I know it. Have you been to the new? No, no, I drive by it. I never see anybody in there. <laughs> but people won't go in there because it, it meant so much to us. It was like Arnold's mm. in happy days. You mm. know? Where'd you grow up? You grew up everywhere, right, brother? All over. Man, you have a good memory, Joey. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, I did. Uh, I was born in L.A. My mom remarried. My stepfather was in the military. We moved to Germany, South Carolina, Belgium, back to Germany, back to South Carolina, and then... I'm in LA now. I remember you telling me stories <laughs> as a kid in Belgium. That's fucking great. How old were you when you were in Belgium? In Belgium, man. I didn't even know what Belgium was when my dad was like, we're getting stationed in Belgium. I was like, Belgium? What, what, what language do they speak? They speak uh, two different languages. They speak French and they speak Flemish. Flemish. Flemish, yeah. In the different regions, you know? I think Flemish is a combination of like Dutch and some other kind of. How long did you out. live there for? Four years, man. Four years. And so that's I moved the first there. Place I moved. You smoked reefer. That is the first place I smoked. And they reefer. have hash and everything. Oh, are you kidding me, man? And you know, like in in Europe, that's all all they smoke. Right, this hash. That's all they smoke, man. So I. Yeah, that was the first first thing I smoked was hash, because um, I mean Amsterdam was only two hours away, so like when I moved to Belgium, I was just like, what do people? What do we do here? And people were like, oh, we hang out in bars. I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, there's no drinking age. It's just like, that's the culture. You know what I mean? How old were you at that point? 14 years old, man. So like, it's not even lying, man. You can ask I, any of my, my friends on Facebook from Shape Belgium. We were hanging out in bars on the weekend, man. Hanging out in bars. We would take the train two hours away to go to Amsterdam, hang out in Amsterdam for the weekend, stay at a little hostel. Sometimes even just like stay up all night or, and sleep in a little corner in the street or something, you know? But yeah, man, that's all they smoked over there was hash. And then they had these little bars outside of the base that we used to hang out in. And you know what's crazy is like we, every, just about everybody smoked, everybody drank and everything, but everybody in, in my high school graduated. There was like no teenage pregnancies. There were no fights ever. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> you think because of the reefer? I don't know, man. I've never, I've never smoked, a, smoked a joint or anything and then wanted to punch somebody in the face so me neither <laughs> me neither it's the worst when you get high and somebody ruins your fucking high with dumb shit and like, <laughs> i was just sitting here minding my own fucking business what was it like when like when you because you said you came back and forth to the u.s a couple times uh-huh. after being a 14 year old in a bar and, and and doing that and then coming back and 14 year olds are are going on play dates in the backs of vans like it, it was it weird it is man it's just it's different you know it's culture shock because i lived in i lived from 14 years old to like 19 years old in Germany and Belgium. So everything is, man, it's like culture shock. So for eight years I was over there and then I went right back to South Carolina, which is like the Bible belt, you know? So it was, it was different, man, you know, it's different. And I had just barely turned and I was just, I was 20 years old when I moved back to South Carolina. So then, um, 
I couldn't even drink at that time. And I remember, <laughs> I remember my, my brother-in-law took me to a strip club whenever, when I, was, when I turned 21. Yeah, so it's different, man. You and know? you're like, I've, been, I've walked around Amsterdam some, from the time I was 14. The strip club isn't really that exciting. <laughs> <laughs> it's really weird when you change cultures. Like, <clears throat> I always tell Lee, Lee, we grew up in a big place. Like, he grew up in Boston. Mm. I grew up in Jersey. You know, I was in that fucking big city every goddamn day. So it's really weird. When I left New York, I stopped doing a lot of the shit I stopped doing because I wouldn't get the satisfaction. Boulder mm. and Colorado had other things to offer me other than New York. So you have to, when you went in Rome, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, when I went to Boulder at first, when I went to Aspen at first, I'm like, I'm not going to ski. And I'm like, what, what am I, an asshole? <laughs> yeah. What am I, a fucking asshole? I'm coming back here <laughs> with this mentality, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like when I... Went to Sarasota that time. I got in trouble as a kid when I was 19. I had to go on the lam for a few months. And I went to Sarasota. I was in shock. Like the kid I was staying with was my age, and we had gone to high school together, and now he's living in Sarasota. And he had gone to high school in Sarasota for like three years. And I went to visit him, and it was like, this is what you fucking do? He's like, yeah, we go to the beach and fucking <laughs> sing songs. Are you fucking crazy? Are you fucking retarded? Uh, you know, it was so weird, the culture shock. Like when I went from even New York City to Snowmass Village, and I would go to those bars at night, and I'd go, this is yeah, not going to work. This I'm, is not going to work. I know you don't remember, but did your mom ever talk about going from Cuba to New York City? Because I can't imagine you were, what, six? Three? Three? From Havana to fucking Manhattan. Wow! Could you imagine? Like, I wish you. I, like, I wish you had a journal shit. or something. I don't remember oh shit. God. I don't remember nothing. Like nothing. Like this. No I remember looking at a beach. That's it. That's all I remember about Cuba. A beach. When I was wow. a kid, I had more memories. Like I would tell my mom, I remember my dad in Cuba driving. But now that shit's gone. You know? Cuba. I definitely want to go to Cuba. It's supposed to be um, one of the top places to go for single men. Yeah, because you could fuck hookers for $2. <laughs> Is that why? Yeah. I thought it was just easy to find a girlfriend over there or something. No, no. There's no girlfriends over there. The girlfriends you meet stay over there. Unless you want to bring back some chick that Lamar Odom ate two years ago on the ranch. And now they shipped her back to Cuba to get rehabbed and shit. Yeah, man. I, you know what? I think I had the most culture shock was whenever I moved from South Carolina to L.A., man. I was just, I was like, Wow. People could sense that I was still wet behind the ears, man. But yeah. when I met you, I banged you for East L.A. right off the fucking bat. Like, no <laughs> question. Did you really? That. Right off the bat. And then I I'm was like talking to the guy, man. and the guy said you had a school uh -huh. somewhere. So I'm like, The guy? He, you know, the guy that's hurt right now, the, the big guy. Oh, Anthony, 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 Anthony. Anthony. Yeah, yeah. And he said Flood he record. trained with you before. Yeah. And that, uh, so I, I see all him. He's a Mexican-looking dude. You're a Mexican-looking dude. <laughs> I put together you East think, LA. You think, you think I look Mexican, really? Yeah, sometimes. I never get that, man. I never get in that. Your people, tone, in your people, voice? People ask me. You know... I'm what do they I'm fucking like, ask you? I'm like, a, I'm like a chameleon. I've, I've had people think I was Armenian. Ar See, I think you're White, Armenian. Armenian, when I tell people I'm, I'm like, I'm half Mexican and half Spanish. So they're like, really? I wouldn't have guessed that. I've had a guy tell me I was, thought I was Filipino. <laughs> Because my dad, my dad actually looks like he's Filipino. He could pass for a Filipino. He's, he's like shorter and darker than me. <coughs> But yeah, I had the most cult culture shock whenever I moved from South Carolina to, to L.A. In which way? I'm sorry. Man, I just, you know, i never been around gangs. i never been around crime or anything, man. <coughs> and like when I moved into my first little pad over here, my, my pad was robbed. And, and I just remember like coming home and my, I had this new DVD player. And, and every time I would drive home, man, there would be like these two little cholos just like sitting there like looking at me like this. And I'd just be like, what are these fools doing? They're casing out my pad, man. <laughs> They're casing out my pad, so when I came home one day, man, my, all my stuff was gone. Well, it's scary <laughs> when, like, you're, when you're moving here. They know, here. man. They're, they're smart, dude. Those, well, they're smart. Well, they're smart, but then, like, I got lucky when I moved here. Or they're just I, good I moved to West still. L.A. Like, no, because you'd look for apartments, and it'd be, like, Baldwin Hills. Mm -hmm. Or, like, I know Compton's not good, but <laughs> there's some areas that, like, aren't good, and there's no, like, there's... There was a, girl, a guy, apparently, when Paula still lived in... My girlfriend lived in Inglewood. Uh-huh. She was like as white, like, white like me, and just moved in there to go to college <laughs> in the wood. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, I've never, I don't even think I've ever been. Yeah, maybe I have. Did you like the South? Because I, I, I only got to spend like a week or so in the South. I, like, mm. I, I drove through it. I loved it. Everyone was so nice and laid back. It seemed great. Probably because you're white. That's also probably true. Uh, that's probably like uh, I lived there as a kid too. Like we, we, 
forgot about like I was born here. We moved to Germany. We moved to South Carolina. So we lived in South Carolina for like seven years. So that's when I was like, that's when I started getting like, I really felt like a lot of racial tension over there. People would always ask me like, what are you? You know, they didn't know because it, <laughs> it was either white or black over there. You know, it was, you know, I had my, you know, it was a trip. You know, I got bullied a lot too. And that's what led to martial arts and everything too. So, but I mean, it's pretty boring, man. You know, I mean, it's just a different, it's just a, a different, um, whole different lifestyle out there, man. I like LA. You know, as soon as I came out to LA, I was like, this is where I was supposed to be the whole time. Cause I mean, this is where my roots are anyway, you know, despite the, the robbing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was born here, you know, all my family's from here. My mother and my father were from here. You know, my sisters were born out here as well. You know, when did you get into martial arts? How old were you? Man, like nine, like nine, ten. Over there. Yeah, in South Carolina. Because, and the whole reason was, was I was getting bullied all the time, man. The brothers used to kick my ass, dude. I don't know why. I was like the little Puerto Rican. I think it was because the sisters liked me. You know, they, they liked, I was like the little cute Puerto Rican boy, you know. I was a little curly hair. I, I used to have hair, by the way. Everybody goes like, when they see me with hair, they're like, oh, professor, you had hair before? I had hair. I had a lot of, a lot of curly hair, man. So uh, black girls used to dig me, man. And I don't know if, I don't know why, but man, I used to get my ass kicked. I used to come home crying all the time. And my parents, you know, my, my dad, my stepfather, he was like from the avenues. And he was like the fighter. He was the fighter guy. You know, he boxed a little bit, so he'd knock fools out. So he was like, he knew how to fight, you know, and he was a, he was a, he was a tough guy. And my mom too, she was crazy. You know, she was from Dogtown. And um, they used to get really pissed off, man. They used to be like, why don't you fucking fight back? You know, you got to fight back. And I'm like, oh, I'm scared. And I'd be crying and shit, you know. And, and then they know, like, I, I think I was scared because they were black too, you know, like, you know, intimidating. I, they were, it was very intimidating for me, man. They're like, you know what? Everybody bleeds red, my, my mom would say, you know. And then finally I came home one day, man, crying again. And they're like, that's it, man. You know, we got, you got to stick up for yourself. We got to do something. So they took me at that time. Taekwondo was blowing up. Taekwondo was just, it was like on the verge of blowing up. So they took me to um, Moreland's Taekwondo Academy. And <laughs> Master Moreland, he's this black guy that lived in Korea. He was stationed in Korea in the army. And um, he spoke fluent Korean, man. And he was, he was like a master of Taekwondo, man. He, took it, he used to come pick us up in his little Taekwondo van on base and pick all the kids up in the neighborhood. He would take us over there, train us. He would kick our ass, and then we'd all be crying in the van on the mm -hmm. way home. Like we were all like such little wusses, man. It was funny. We'd all be like, because he would spar with us, man. And when I look back, we were just we were just pussies, basically, man. We were just whiners. We were little, little babies, man. You know, he he never, never he. We thought it was, he was beating us, but he really wasn't, man. We were just like scared, you know. But um, man, he toughened me up, man. It took me a couple of years because even after take, take, taking Taekwondo for a couple of years, I still hadn't really grown up and got that confidence yet you know so um i was like a late bloomer man but yeah i did taekwondo with master Morland for for like the whole time i was in south carolina and hapkido and then um then we moved to belgium i did some taekwondo over there played a little football played a little baseball you know partied a little bit moved to germany and then i would train at like little local schmokel places you know 